Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Yes, the backdrop is slightly changed. The old electromagnetic poster is back. The TV, the telly is gone. Um, and yeah, I've just, you can see a bit more of the racks now. So let me know if you like it without the TV. Anyway, let's get to it. Mailbag, I don't have anything, but there's the shelf. There's the mailbag shelf. It looks pretty darn full. Having a hard time fitting more stuff under there. So let's just grab the first cab off the rank. I think it must have come recently. So sorry if you've got something down the bottom. It's just convenient. Let's go. Thank you very much. Uh, moments in etched in time. Um, uh, John Revel. Thank you very much from um, Silverdale here in New South Wales, Australia, not Austria. If you want to send something into the mailbag, PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales 2153, Australia, not Austria. All right, so let's crack it open. Moments etched in time. What is it like? Is that his company? I, I don't know. It sounds, sounds cool. So let's have a look. We've got a note. You know I don't want to read the note yet. Don't want to spoil up. Oh, oh, thank you. That is an, oh, look at that. Beautiful, oh, that's, that's, it's etched. Moments etched in time. As an EV blog, etched, oh, oh, look what's on the back. Oh, beautiful. Um, there, I assume like a laser etching merch company. That is absolutely fantastic. What's in here? Oh, can't imagine. What is it, black plastic thing? Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, cool. It's etched. It's an etched DeLorean. And that sucker, this sucker is nuclear. It is going to light up. I assume this is like an edge light thing. Oh, that could make a nice ornament on the side. Yeah, I know I've got to power up the time circuits. Yeah, I know I've got to fix my uh, uh, 100,000 subscriber Nixie tube counter. Oh, oh there we go. That's better. Ooh, schmick as. So, that's gonna sit in there like that. It's got a wanky remote control. And there's the mailbag crawl from John, and sure enough, um, yeah, this is his company, uh, momentsetchedintime.com.au. Check it out. Normally, he doesn't do the acrylic uh, displays like this, but if there's enough interest, he will. He reckons those um, thermal mug things, they're a goer, and um, all sorts of other stuff. So you can do your online designy uh, type stuff. So very cool. Thank you very much, John. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah, look at that bad boy. We're in strobe mode. We can go in flash mode. We can go in fade mode using the remote control. We can go in smooth mode. I can't see the colors because I've got um, edge detection on my camcorder screen and it just all shows up as red <laughs> because it's just detecting the edges. And if you just want red, green, and blue, white, look at that. Beautiful. What a Bobby Dazzler. Wow, then you got programmable buttons. Thanks, John. Check out the website down below. Next up, I already opened this one because they didn't put mailbag on the front. Um, you, you gotta put mailbag because I get stuff sent here. Open it accidentally. I knew it was a mailbag. Thank you very much, person unknown. Um, no, it's not a Cisco thing, it's a Cisco box. So we've got a someone there anonymous. Thank you very much. Anyway. Let's have a look. It is a rack thing. It's a C-Class encryptor cabinet. Installation notes. I don't know what... What is a C-Class encryptor cabinet? Why do I have a front panel? Purchased an Australian ex-government secure 19-inch rack. Found this panel and manual in the bottom. Raised more questions than it answered. Okay, so this is not... Really, this is like asking the question, what the heck is this thing? Um, it, it probably came on one of those, you know, surplus auction things. You get a whole pallet load of stuff and this was probably in there. So they're wondering if I or any EV blog viewers have uh, seen or mentioned decryptor or even operated one. Either way, I hope you might find one in a dumpster dive in the business park. Maybe. I don't know. That's what it looks like. It's a, a secure 19-inch rack. Mounting plate, racking kit, and got things like encryptor box and stuff like this. If anyone has ever seen something like this, I don't know, what's an encryptor? 
Um, it probably for, you know, some sort of secure military communications or something like that. And, and it shows like a thing in there, shows like a something, some sort of widget. I assume that's the encryptor. And uh, like I've worked in the military and I've not seen one of these um, encryptor boxes, but I haven't worked, I haven't worked for military contractors uh, before, not for the actual military. Um, so there you go. It's a, if anyone has any clue, please. Leave it in the comments down below. Hi to all my viewers in Germany. Thank you very much, uh, you, Roger. I'm from Oberit in Deutschland. Have not been to Oberit. So <laughs> there you go, let us know. Okay, let's open it up, see what's in here. We got, no, oh, uh, yeah, what's going on here? Don't, we're gonna have to cut through the box. Hi, Dave, thank you. Oh, oh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> Why'd you have to put photos on the top, really? Hang on. Nineteen seventies. Ah, a slightly out late sixties Russian TT three um, tester. There you go. Even the older TT one versions also existed, as well as the more modern TH four M variant. Check out that. Have you ever seen a dial like that before? I have not. That is seriously. Interesting. Oh, built like a brick dunny too. Let's tear it down. And we have a schematic. Oh, yeah. There's not much in a analog meter, of course. Yes, this certainly is an interesting range switch uh, design. And there's some pictures here. I'll link them in uh, down below. And uh, the back plane with specs and range is missing. The instrument seems to be in working order, but the needle is impeded by the flaky varnishing covering under the scale. Oops. Um, two minute teardown. Thank you very much, you. Look at this. Oh, what a Bobby Dazzler. Um, yeah, I've not seen a range switch like that. Wow, you can use it one handed. Right or left-handed? Wow, that is, that is sweet. That wins the award for the funkiest rain switch, but uh, there's, there's some indent there, but, uh, well, yeah, I can hear a click, hang on. Yeah, yeah, I hear a click sometimes while the rain switch is old, but geez, I mean, <laughs> times 10 to the power of four. <laughs> Fantastic, if, if you don't know your powers, you're screwed. Does that mean the scale is 100 microamps? Uh, so that would put it at uh, 10k ohms per volt. Not exactly the most sensitive uh, meter out there, but yeah, look at, you can see inside there how it's all like cracked. And to, no, you're like, like all flaked up. As he said, all the, um, like the varnish, the varnish is just flaked inside there. Wow. And uh, yeah, oh, oh, I thought those connectors were a bit, how you doing? They're not, those binding posts, they're not. They're, they're supposed to be on an angle like that. <laughs> they looked, <laughs> they looked a dodgy as, but they're not supposed to stick out. Oh, wow. Hands up um, if you're from Russia and you use one of these bad boys. And it takes two uh, 1.5 volt batteries and they're these. Look at them. Um, the ATC brand, Super, uh, made in China. Um, so, yeah, not original uh, Rusky. And um, R10S size A332. I, offhand, I don't know that one. Um, Bueller? Bueller? I don't think I've ever seen that size in anything. Oh, how I wish this was smell vision Oh, the, <laughs> the gorgeous, like, oh, smell coming out of that. When I took the back cover off, oh, it just wafted everywhere. Oh. Gorgeous. Anyway, look, we've got a little internal uh, trimmer in there. Um, and, yeah, wow, it's all rain switch, isn't it? And are these wires actually, I don't know, how are they terminated? They're pretty how you doing. Um, are they like a crimpy thing or are they a solder on the other side, like a solder tab buttony thing or something? But, wow, check out our resistors here. Look at these. I don't even know the name of that. Uh, package. If you do, leave it in the comments. Probably did, you know, 40 years ago or something. <laughs> but as you can see, yeah, that's really something, isn't it? Wow. They're actually pretty small, those resistors. They're remarkably small. Then they've got uh, bigger wire wound ones here, obviously. Then you get some of your more conventional looking ones here. So, yeah, they're what you're familiar with. It, uh, that's interesting, isn't it? And they've used um, sleeving over there to prevent 
short in, but it's all pretty how you're doing. Hand wired, but uh, that's the case for all these um, analog uh, meters, even like the super uh, quality ones. You look in them and they're all, you know, hand done, hand wired. Wow. That really is something, and so is the smell. <laughs> so is the smell. If anyone knows a place, um, preferably in Sydney, where I can get like smells, odors analyzed, I've wanted, always wanted to do a video on what is that electronic smell, you know, and actually get it like chemically analyzed. This would be a perfect candidate. So thank you very much, you. That's absolutely fantastic. That is a Bobby Dazzler that is going straight to the pool room. Uh, that is just a magnificent range switch. Wow, it's, you know, <laughs> seen better days, can do with some uh, oily, but, and yeah, you give it a bit of a jiggle, and yeah, it's probably not the, it's probably not the best, probably never was the best, but that's not just age, I think that's part of the design, but like, ah, uh, like, like it's hard, like you've got to feel it, you've got to actually, like, I can feel this thing, and I can hear it clicking over, you're probably not hearing the faint clicks, and you're not, feeling the faint little indents and stuff like that but there are indents there like there's not one there there's one there there's not one there there's one there <laughs> not one there and there's one there I, oh actually that indents every second one indent no indent this will be indent yep no indent no nah. this will be indent no Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. No indent? Oh, barely. No, that can't be a pattern, surely. <laughs> no, I'm just imagining things. Anyway, that's awesome. Another suck of the sav from Germany, from Olsdorf. I think I've heard of Olsdorf. Anyway, um, how do, I, how do I open this one? Oh, it's got a Terry. I don't need the knife. Look at that. Bobby does look. Okay, let's have a, oh, oh, something's framed. That's heavy, whatever's in there. What is in here? Oh, oh, in memory, Bob Weidler, look at that. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. Joy forever. Wow, wow. Bob Weidler, 1937 to 1991, integrated circuit pioneer, inventor of the basic building blocks of linear ICs, including the Weidler current source and the Weidler band gap voltage reference. That's a PCB. That is really schmick. Okay, you see how they've done that? Hi Dave, given your recent problem of remembering names, it's not recent, I've always had a problem with names. Um, you know, you're either you're like a name person or you're not. I uh, thought you might appreciate this. Unfortunately, I could not supply these parts at the uh, time of shipping. Unfortunately, you have them in parts bin somewhere to populate it. Oh, okay. So yeah, the footprints are on here. The idea is to actually solder on the parts into the footprints. Um, if I can, I'm gonna have to get originals now to complete this thing. Or you could try to get the extra mile hand down some of the first production year codes. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, I'll post the Gerber data in the forum when the mailbag episode goes live. Thank you very much. Uh, best regards, Breaking Ohm's Law. Um, it's a forum handle at the EV Blog Forum. So I'll link it down below. That's a Bobby Dazzler. Now, you're either going to love or hate how uh, this has been done, but I, like, eh. Anyway, we talked about this on uh, today's Amp Hour um, the podcast, if you don't know. I've only been doing it for, like, 10 years, myself and Chris Gamble. Um, yeah, we actually talked about this. Chris thought uh, he was a bit triggered by this, but we actually talked about uh, different techniques for uh, doing art like this on uh, PCBs. Now, um, you can actually do, with a standard PCB, you can actually do uh, five different colors in quote marks um and by this i mean right this is a standard uh this is a matte black um solder mask with a regular white uh silk screen here which um uh, uh, by the way um linear voltage regulator not sure what a linear a linear voltage regulator is um yeah oops and by the way yeah um unfortunately the pcb manufacturer has put their um a batch code up here which is really annoying um some manufacturers um will give you the option to actually remove that um others well <laughs> good ones actually won't put it on it at all um but yeah it's um, although i can't see this fitting on like a regular panel i think this would have been a custom jobby anyway um yeah really annoying they put their mark up there but you can tell them if it's important if it's a front panel or something you know important like this uh plaque uh kind of thing then you can tell them not to put their 
batch code on there. So, or you can tell them to put it in a specific location, um, by the way. Anyway, you can put those in your instruction notes. But anyway, you can get um, five different uh, colors, so to speak, when doing this artwork on a normal PCB. Of course, you can get a multi-pass uh, process for your silk screen. So you can actually get uh, different colors on your uh, silk screen overlay. White is just, you know, happens to be like the default uh, color, but not that they do actual silk screens much anymore. It's not the process, but it's still called silk screen. Anyway, legend overlay, you can actually get different colors and they can actually apply that as multiple uh, processes. So, you know, some manufacturers have, you know, might have half a dozen different colors uh, to choose from or even more um, for your um, overlay so you can actually uh, get that but yeah it'd be every overlay every extra process I've got to pass it through for the different color is ka-ching 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 on the uh, cash register but anyway so you can get five different colors so one is your white um, overlay like this and then you've got your, your solder mask color whatever happens to be your solder mask this is a matte black you can get a gloss black you can get your traditional green you can get reds and yellows and black bloody purples these days, everyone's doing bloody purples and god knows what colour, you can get pink ones these days, oh god when I was a boy it was green, take it or leave it. Anyway so that's two colours and uh, then of course um, you've got your uh, just your bare, either your bare copper, um, is, so you can do like solder mask over bare copper um, and then they'll give you bare copper but then that of course will corrode extremely quickly. So this one of course has got gold uh, flash on it, um, so yeah it's just a regular uh, gold plated board, it's not that huge amount extra um, and yeah so we've got our gold there but that's basically just you know copper sort of goldy colour because it's not really good quality gold so it doesn't look like real gold but anyway uh, let's not go there and so you've got your gold color so you've got your one two three colors and then the fourth color is the bare uh, fiberglass in here now um, you might be thinking well Dave you said five colors how do you get a fifth color well if you actually remove the copper from the back of the board it will look different than this, I mean this is, uh, well unfortunately we'd have to take this out won't we? I presume that is entire uh, copper on the back there, but of course you got the uh, black uh, solder mask and of course if you're doing this board you might do it as a single uh, sided job um, and but you wouldn't really want to etch off you wouldn't do it do a double sided and then etch it all off because then they'll get a bit nasty with you um, because they, you're wasting all their etchant they have to replace it quicker but anyway you can get different I guess um, translucent properties of the fiberglass depending on the back end you've got the uh, copper or the solder mask it doesn't doesn't really matter whether it's solder mask or it's uh, copper it's you know it's going to make it um, you know Know, just appear dark like this but um, yeah if we didn't have anything behind there then it would appear lighter and of course you can actually light up um, from behind as well so you can do all sorts of arty farty things with um, PCB materials you can light them up uh, you know you can put uh, backlit LEDs on the back and actually shine through the uh, fiberglass material and you can do all sorts of uh, jazzy stuff but yeah with a standard PCB you can actually get five different colors. So anyway, I'll link in the amp hour um, episode if it's out by then um, and where we uh, talk about different uh, processes uh, potential for doing something like this. Anyway, thank you very much Breaking Ohm's Law. That's going straight to the pool room and I will have to try and source um, the LM10, uh, the LM100 and the uh, 702 as well. Uh, of course, you know, you didn't try the holy grail would be to get the uh, original, you know, uh, launch year date. Um, you know, like an original, maybe an original week. You know, first week it was released or something. I don't know. And hands up if you've got um, like the original release date um, uh, version of these devices. That'd be awesome. And then you just solder them in there and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, <laughs> get it? Bob. Good on you, Bob. So yes, Breaking Ohm's Law is on the EV blog forum, as is everyone. So I'll link in, I always link in, a uh, video uh, link, a specific uh, thread on the EV blog forum for this video. And uh, Breaking Ohm's Law said he'll put up the uh, files for this if you want to get your own made. Awesome. I think this has been sent to the wrong address. I checked with the uh, HR department and there's no Mr. AC coupling here. So I'm going to have to send it back to uh, JB J Furia um, in Paris. Um, uh, postcode 1768. Um, or should I just open it? Nah, let's just open it. Got a case. Oh, okay. 
It's one of these tens things. I don't know. I've never... Well, no, technically, I kind of... I think I did use one at the physio, or the physio used one on me once, and bloody hell, it hurt. Um, <laughs> I was trying to rehab my knee, and uh, it's one of these tens machines. Needs two 9-volt batteries, does it? I guess. Yeah, that looks pretty old. Neurotrack tens machines. We'll do... I believe that's meant for a two minute tear down. So this comes from a medical company in the UK, Verity Medical Neurotrack Tens. So Tens machine, it's look, you know, it's, I don't know the, is anyone, yeah, 15, really? Okay, it just, it just seems old, like, it just seems like really old, like, you know, uh, 90s or 2000 vintage or something like that just seems to be like the cream colored thing anyway um yeah there's two proby uh interfaces like that and so they go into the unit then we've got some uh two millimeter jacks like that 2019 yeah they've expired but <laughs> we'll see if they still work got the original manual the quick start instructions for those playing along at home and uh there we go you can um uh, it looks like you can set the current and stuff you can set the frequency um i don't know pulse rate how do these tens things work um yeah they put like pulses into your muscles and stuff and we've got the actual uh pads there too so sticky adhesive pads i guess you can can you only use them no these are reusable right i think they're yeah they got sort of oh oh yeah um oh i think that sticky oh that sticky gel is oh that's seen better days i think i don't know i can stick it on myself but really there you go works like i bought one yeah no five five milliamps on here there you go this one will go up to six. Oh, i can't even can't even go to 11. so here's all the different uh modes you can get it looks like you can't like do a custom one i think they're all sort of like uh preset um all you can do is adjust the uh current amplitude uh basically so burst mode short burst of nine pulses modulation this was designed to help prevent nerve accommodation that some patients experience achieved by continuously slicing the pulse width and rate oh okay no yanks allowed you can get uh different diameter uh pads and stuff like that and uh there you go you got fingery problems, knee arthritis, a new blah, 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 uh, d d yeah, whatever that is, um, <laughs> cervical problems, um, d yeah, overorbital, yeah, want to fix my overorbital. If you got menstrual pain, there you go, feet pain, <laughs> toothache. Um, really? <laughs> I didn't think you'd use a tens machine for toothache. Really? Is that a thing? Hands up if you've ever used a tens machine for toothache. Sheesh. So this is what the waveform looks like on uh, 4 milliamps, uh, 100 hertz, 200 microsecond uh, pulse. And there you go. So it looks like they stagger um, the pulse on each channel like that. There you go. So that's what it's like. I mean, it's it's sane. 50 uh, volts per division. Um, uh, 100 volts open circuit. That's have I got my probe. I think I got my probe settings correct. Yeah, I just realised those uh, pads expired in 2016. So yeah, that'd be like the uh, conductive um, gel, the conductive sort of semi-adhesive tacky gel that they have on the bottom of them. They've got a shelf life, obviously. No, I thought I had them crossed, but I didn't. Anyway, there you go. Um, So now we're at the... So I put a 4.7k uh, load on there, and now I've got... There you go, second channel, max 5 milliamps, and uh, there you go, 100 millivolts uh, per division. So that's what we're getting. But now they're actually lined up, because I've actually got channel 1 turned off. So that's actually being picked up. I'm adjusting it now, 5 milliamps, it's gone back to 6, and then 7, 8. Oh, no, it can actually go up. Look. Oh, it can actually go up. 10, 10 milliamps, it can go higher. Whoa. And then this, this one's changed. Look. As I change channel 1, channel 2 is... I think it's channel 2 that's changing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's almost as if there's, like... That's a circuit problem. Right? Whoa. Check check that out. Okay. No, there we go. Whoa. One, one million. There we go. Okay. No, I was just looking at that. Okay. So, it looks like that we have some crosstalk happening here between channels. 
So I checked, and um, sure enough, uh, the open circuit uh, tens voltages are typically like up to 100 volts. So that's really what we'll see in there. Of course, they don't have the uh, capability to actually deliver that voltage into load. So these things are designed to be, you know, relatively safe. Although, you know, you probably wouldn't want to whack these things across your heart. Teardown time. There's not much in them. Uh, yeah, we've got a micro in there. Probably got some uh, op amps or whatnot. And uh, then... Here's our step-up transformers for both channels, and that is that just like an output choke or something? I'm not uh, not entirely sure. A couple of big-ass caps flapping around in the breeze there, and yeah, not a huge amount, but yeah, just got some uh, step-up transformers, and um, then they just control the uh, primary side, um, a pulse shape, and that just and they step it up on the uh, secondary. There's the micro. It's got some crusty stuff on it. Um, but it's a Samsung jobby. I don't know that offhand. Uh, Bueller. Bueller. It's got an LM393 there. Another 393 there. <laughs> and a 4013 <laughs> 4000 series CMOS jobby. Oh boy. That's hilarious. So yeah, there's nothing doing in these things at all, really. Um, yeah, I think there's lots of like do-it-yourself uh, tens kits around, isn't there? But I'd like, I'm sure like the this one would have cost a, a bit of uh, coin, I think. But you know, you can get some like really el cheapo ones, can't you? Some uh, cheap and nasty ones. That's what you want when you're sticking electrodes on yourself and uh, uh, you know, and stimulating your muscles. Um, yeah, I can remember I had my, you know, when it was done on my knee, that was like. It was really painful, and they really, they turned it up to eleven. In dermatome charts, um, these bad boys are um, <laughs> what divides your body up into, like, each section of this has a specific um, input on your um, spinal column, your, like, nerve uh, impulse on your um, spinal column. So this is how your body is actually divided up, and this is why you can get, you know, numb in some places, I guess, and, uh, you know, not in others, because if you damage uh, one of those, um, you know, spinal receptors or whatever, I don't know, um, my physiology, but yeah, if you uh, damage one of those, you can actually get numbness in certain areas of your body, and this is how they divvy it up. <laughs> I'm guessing, uh, you know, you don't want the old uh, S3 to go there. Uh, that'd be a bummer. Oh, there you go. I forgot the specs. It can actually do 0 to 80 milliamps into a 500 ohm load. Indicate actually milliamps will uh, tend to be less than indicated due to electrode impedance. Um, yeah, at a thousand ohms load. Yeah, yeah, etc. But, um, geez, that could do... I can do a lot more than I thought. Anyway, um, yeah, constant current, maximum output voltage. Um, so it's open circuit compliance voltage. Yeah, 180 volts. There you go. So yeah, we'll certainly uh, see in that. Yeah, so it's actually a rather little grunty device, isn't it? Hmm. Huh. So I'd give it a go, but I don't have any pain at all, really. Um, <laughs> even after going to the gym today. So it, yeah, I don't know. I'll definitely keep this. Um, for Yep, and I've got I've got four pads. Um, so if I need to, who cares if they're expired? I don't know. Just stick them on with some gaffer tape or something. She'll be right. No wackers. Um, and so yeah, thank you very much for sending that in. Interesting little tear down. These tens units. Hands up if you, uh, if you. I know a lot of people use these. So yeah, I know uh, that a lot of people like swear by these things to. Uh, you know, it give them pain relief and uh, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> all it did was for me during rehab is just cause pain. Um, no, yeah, they uh, what they were doing with uh, like I had like a much like a much bigger machine than this that they hooked me up to. It came on like a cart and everything. Um, and I think because they were doing muscular rehab there, so I'm not sure if these these ten units can actually do that muscular uh, rehab stuff. And uh, I think a lot of uh, sports people uh, use the high end ones, don't they, to actually stimulate and build the muscle? Because you can actually do like a workout; it actually contracts uh, the muscles, and you can actually get your muscles to actually do a real like strenuous workout by hooking up to these machines. And you can do it, you know, faster, better, safer, or whatever. You know, especially if you've got uh, if you're rehabbing um, something. And yeah, I'm not sure if this could do it. I don't know. Maybe I'll have a play around with it but i don't know if i'd be able to make my muscles twitch or something i don't know if you want to see that maybe second channel video perhaps <laughs> leave it in the comments
This one's from Shenzhen Probe Sound Co. Limited. Uh, not from China, from Hong Kong. So let's crack it open and see what we've got. Got that nice uh, Constantinery foam thing. I do like that. And that's it. That's it. There's no note. Oh yeah, I think I yeah I think I remember what this is. They emailed me. Let's have a look. Ta da! What's that's a belt clip. <laughs> nice. It is. Oh, whoop. Oh, I was gonna say that's a little bit hefty. Um, probe tweezers. Let's see if it comes on. LCR probe tweezers. No, I might have to install. I might have to switch it on manually. I may have to install batteries. Um, this is interesting. It comes with a looks like a little calibration. Well, not a calibration board, like a little test board or something. So that's pretty cool. And it comes with a uh, USB-C cable. Okay, it may be flat. I'll have to uh, charge it up. But um, these are the Shannon tweezers. They're called. So I do have a whole bunch right down here. LCR tweezers. And here they are. I was going to do a uh, shootout. We've got some uh, a global specialties one, LCR 58. Um, this is just yeah. If you want to see it come in, um, of course that's the um, I can't remember. That's the uh, the smart tweezers one. Uh, then we've got the other, yeah, that was the little rotational uh, one, that's the um, e-design one. Then we've got the Made in uh, Canada one as well. And um, yeah, I think there was, uh, I should have opened this, um, digital tweezers. Oh, okay, another mailbag. <laughs> I put it down there thinking I probably wouldn't do a mailbag thing. So, <laughs> bonus mailbag. <laughs> Let's open it up and... Uh, see who it's from. Oh, it's another e-design one. Right, that's why. Um, oh, no! I thought, hang on! It says multimeter MM Digital Tweezers. Tweezers! So I didn't even open it, and I put it down there with the other LCR tweezers, and it's a Miniware DS212 Digital Storage Oscilloscope. Have they mixed up the boxes or something? Is it actually a... a <laughs> No, I think it is. I think it is the, it is the tweezers. Okay, they've put it in the oscilloscope box. So yeah, I think yeah they they sent a new version because I destroyed, didn't I? Yeah, I physically destroyed my other one. So there you go. Now I've got six LCR tweezers. I will give you a quick two second look at this one. I won't do a tear down or anything, but we'll just have a go at it. But I've got six different LCR tweezers. If you want to add another added to the uh, shootout list. Leave it in the comments down below and thumbs it up if you want to see it. Because if one person just puts it and nobody thumbs it up, then... So here you go. We've got the uh, Shannon tweezers, as they're called. Um, and interestingly, the Shannon tweezers actually um, started on the EEV blog uh, forum and their website actually uh, links to... Um, their main page links to the EEV blog forum uh, to get information and discussion on this thing. And uh, it, it did switch on before. There we go, I plugged it in and um, it's now charging up. Yeah, I assume the battery's a little bit uh, flat there. It came out uh, flat, but there you go. It's got like one femtofarad resolution there, 0.001 uh, picofarads puff. So there you go. And if we, it's automatic, of course, it's uh, whoop, up to 17 meg or whatever. There we go. 17 milliohms, 20 milliohms or whatever. But yeah, it looks and feels like a quality bit of kit. I really like it. Is this a, yeah, yeah, this was a joystick interface. So I have not read the instructions. Of course I haven't. But uh, did that have diode mode? ESR mode? Impedance mode? Yeah, nice. And it's got the, uh, it's got the graphic there showing that and also uh, test voltage as well. Anyway, the probes look and feel really good. Uh, this is not going to be a review. Just wanted to give you a look at it. Um, their website, unfortunately, uh, seems says uh, mentions the components shortage. So you may not be able to get one um, as of <laughs> this video. But anyway, um, definitely work, worth a squeeze. Uh, firmware version 1. So this is like, this is early release uh, stuff. But there you go, there's the quick reference card. I like the like the symbol up there, that's neat. And that's a nice simple reference card there. Neat, oh, and then a graphical uh, tree of the menus. Um, Sweet. So can we just put that back and just hold that and put it into auto mode? How do we go to auto mode? A, auto mode, there you go. No wackers, all right. So this is 10 puff, there you go. 10 puff, no worries, 100. 
Nice. Let's go all the way up to one mic. Oh, getting ripped off there <laughs> on the one mic. But, you know, th that's not these tweezers. That's um, <laughs> the actual cap. They've got massive uh, tolerances. Here we go. 95, getting gypped again. And we've got one milli. So it can do some high values. Nice. But typically these LCR tweezers, like you're, you're targeting uh, surface mount stuff in uh, production testing, production sorting, you know, stuff like that. They're really handy. You should actually get a pair of like an LCR a tweezer um, thing. I think it's an essential bit of uh, kit these days um, for any lab because they're, you know, they're reasonably priced these days. And uh, yeah, no workers. So can it do it? Can it detect a lead or automatically? Let's have a look. Don't think so. I wouldn't expect it to. Just a regular diode? Nah. Yep, inductor. No worries. And it's got cow menu uh, instructions on the back. So I assume this is uh, uh, supplied with it, ordinarily, is it? Anyway, Shannon tweezers. Looks pretty good. Um, please, uh, thumbs up in the uh, comments. Leave a comment. And if enough people thumbs it up, I'll get off my ass and do that um, LCR uh, tweezer shootout. Very quick tear down there. It's got two big ass screws holding in the bottom that must be holding in the arm of it oh geez that looks really nice anyway that's our buzzer and uh yeah we have to get the board yeah we we'll have to get the board out there you go what processor is that can't read it on my camcorder screen here but uh yeah that's all she wrote geez there's not much in it is there all the smarts is in the software it's a really hard one to read electron cloud ink E Electron Cloud EC1421. Electron Cloud EC1421. What the heck? Never heard of it. Yeah, I have no clue um, what, <laughs> what that is whatsoever. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Um, yeah, no idea. Anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I'll leave the link to the uh, EEV blog forum down below and the website, of course. Um, and maybe you'll be able to buy this soonish. Oh, you can see my macro lens. Catch you next time. Yeah.